8.2 Lesson 3, Integration by Parts. Our objectives for today's lesson are, 1. You will know how to find an integral using integration by parts for a problem in which a factor of the original integral appears in the work. And we'll take a look at an example for that. And the second objective for our second example will be, you'll be able to use a tabular method to perform integration by parts. So that's called a tabular method vocabulary. So for our first objective, we look at example 5 from our textbook. So in red, we have the integration by parts formula. And the problem that we want to look at for example 5 is, find the indefinite integral of secant cubed x dx. And here, a little bit small, but you can see uh, the hints that you were given. And uh, you are going to begin by writing secant cubed x as secant x times secant squared x. So having done that, you are now able to apply the integration by parts formula. So as you can see from the hints here, we know that the indefinite integral of secant squared x dx is tangent x plus a constant of integration. So how should we apply the integration by parts formula? We should let dv be equal to uh, the most complicated part of the integrand that fits a basic integration rule. So in that case, we're going to let uh, dv be equal to secant squared x dx. Why? Because we know how to integrate secant squared x dx. Uh, the derivative of tangent x is secant squared x, so the indefinite integral of secant squared x dx will be tangent x. So that's why we, cho we, cho we choose dv to be secant squared x dx. So what's left? What's left is secant x. So we let u be equal to secant x, and it's easy for us to find the differential of u. Uh, we use the derivative of secant x, which is secant x times tangent x dx. So now that we have done that, we are ready to begin applying the integration by parts formula. So this is the integration by parts formula, and we rewrote our original integral as we have done here in green, and then we applied the integration by parts formula choosing u and dv as you see at the top. So now you have uv minus the indefinite integral of v du. So uv, so u is secant x and v is tangent x. So you have secant x times tangent x, that's uv minus the indefinite integral of v du. So v is tangent x, and du is secant x times tangent x dx. So minus the indefinite integral of v du will give you secant x times tangent x times tangent x will give sec tangent squared x, and then you have dx. Now there is a trig identity that you can use. This trig identity is called a Pythagorean identity, and you are able to take tangent squared x and rewrite that as secant squared x minus 1 by using this Pythagorean identity. And you might be wondering, why would you do that? And again, it, it is kind of because you have an idea of where you want to go with the process. And, and because your ultimate goal is to find this indefinite integral, and you're expecting that a factor of the original integral will appear in your work, this would be something that you would do for that reason. Because you can see that tangent squared x can be rewritten as secant squared x minus 1, and what would be the next step that you see here in example 5? After you rewrite tangent squared x, you can distribute the secant x to each of these two terms, and when you do that, you get secant cubed x uh, minus secant x. And then when you distribute this minus sign, 
that becomes minus the indefinite integral of secant cubed x uh, minus negative minus negative 1 times the indefinite integral of secant x dx. So minus negative is plus. So that's how you get that. And this is what we were talking about earlier uh, when we said somewhere in your process you're going to get a factor of the original integral appear in your work. So here's our original integral and we see that we have negative 1 times our original integral appear on the right side of this equation. So now we would solve for that just by using algebra to move the integrals to one side of the equation. So here's how we do that. We're just going to add the indefinite integral of secant cubed x dx to both sides of the equation. When you add it to the right side of the equation, it will add with what's already there to give you 0. And on the left side of the equation, it will add with what's already here to give you 2 times the indefinite integral of secant cubed x dx. So that's how we get to this step. And when we get to this step, again, what is your objective? Your objective is to find our original integral, which is right here now. So you can solve for that by multiplying both sides of the equation by one-half. And on the right side of the equation, you have the indefinite integral of secant x dx. And as a part of the hints, uh, we remember from calculus AB that the indefinite integral of secant x dx is natural log of the absolute value of secant x plus tangent x uh, plus the constant of integration. So we know what this integral here is. I write it here and we multiply both sides of the equation by one half and at the very end of our work we have our constant of integration plus c. Our second objective for today's lesson is this. Use a tabular method to perform integration by parts. So here we have the integration by parts formula and here we have a problem to which we begin applying the integration by parts formula using the guidelines that we've learned. So we let u be equal to x squared and we let dv be the remaining part of the integrand, so sine of 4x dx. So we need to find the differential of u, which will be 2x dx, and find v by integrating both sides of this uh, dv equation. So we find an antiderivative of sine of 4x. Now, the derivative of cosine is negative sine, so if we want the derivative to be positive sine, the antiderivative must be negative cosine. So that's why we have negative cosine of 4x, and we need this factor of 1 fourth because if you just have negative cosine of 4x, because cosine of 4x is a composition of functions, you have an inside function, so if you just have negative cosine of 4x, your derivative would actually be uh, 4 times sine of 4x, because you would apply the chain rule and take the derivative of the inside function. But you don't want 4 times sine of 4x, you want 1 times sine of 4x, that's why you need this uh, factor of 1 fourth outside to compensate. Uh, if you wanted to do integration by substitution, you could, but I think it's simpler to do it mentally here. So you would do that, and then you would apply the integration by parts formula. So you have uv, so when you do u times v, this is what you have, uv minus the indefinite integral of v du. And you can simplify here, uh, and then you can continue to apply the integration by parts formula, and you should be able to do it. Uh, after the next application of the integration by parts formula. There is a way to do repeated applications of integration by parts using a table. You're doing the same work. You start the same way as we have done here. Uh, and you're going to do exactly the same thing where you start with u and you find du by finding what? You're finding the derivative of x squared, which is 2x, right? 
and then you have dv, and you find v by integrating, so you're finding an antiderivative of sine of 4x. And then you have uv minus the indefinite integral of v du. So let's see, let's, let's see how we can set that up using a table. Same problem, but now we're going to set it up using a table so the work becomes more efficient and we can do this faster. So here we take a look at example, uh, example 7 from our textbook, and we have a short paragraph about the types of problems for which the tabula method works really well, similar to what you see here for example 7. In problems involving repeated applications of integration by parts, a tabula method illustrated here can help to organize the work. This method works well for integrals of the form that you see listed here. And of course what we have here is something that fits the first form. And if you had x to the fourth power, you would actually be doing repeated applications of integration by parts more often than we have to do for this particular problem. So the higher the power of x, the more times you have to do integration by parts, uh, repeated applications of integration by parts. And obviously you can see the benefit of an efficient way of setting it up if you've got to do uh, maybe like four repeated applications of integration by parts. So let's see how this is done. So first of all, you're using the same integration by parts formula that we've been using, so there's nothing new about that. And you have to start by choosing UNDV, just like you've done before, so there's nothing new about that as well. And it's exactly the same thing that you saw earlier when I did this problem without using the tabula method. So you're going to use u to be x squared, so dv will be sine of 4x dx. So you've got u and dv, just like we've always done. So now the difference is now you're going to set it up using a table. And you have three columns for your table. The first column is positive and negative signs. So you begin the first row with a positive sign and then you alternate. The second column is u and its derivatives. So what do you normally do? You let u be equal to x squared the next step is to find the differential of u in which you are finding the derivative of x squared, which is 2x, and then multiplying by the differential dx. So you're taking the derivatives of x squared. So that's what this is saying here for the second column. You begin with u, which is x squared, and then you write the derivatives of x squared until you get to 0. And then for the last column, that is for uh, what we did with dv here dv is equal to sine of 4x dx. So you write sine of 4x, and what do you do with this equation here to find v? You integrate. You're finding antiderivatives. So that's, why, that's what we're doing here. We're finding antideriv antiderivatives one row after the other. So the antiderivative of sine of 4x is negative one-fourth times cosine of 4x, an antiderivative of negative one-fourth times cosine of 4x is negative one-sixteenth times sine of 4x, and an antiderivative of negative one-sixteenth times sine of 4x is one over 64 of cosine of 4x. So now that you've set up the table and you see how it was set up, we're ready to go ahead and uh, use the table to find the integral. We're ready to use the table to find an antiderivative of the integrand. So how do we do that? This is how you do it using the table. So you just multiply diagonally. Start here and you multiply positive 1 times x squared times negative 1 fourth times cosine of 4x. Remember, that's going to give you, this is uh, from dv is equal to sine of 4x dx. And when you integrate that, you get v is equal to negative one-fourth cosine of 4x. And what is this? This is u. So when you multiply as we are doing right now, what are you getting? You're getting uv. And then you just uh, repeat the pattern, and it does repeated applications of integration by parts for you. 
So it's just the same thing that we've done, but it sets it up in a way that allows you to be more efficient uh, repeatedly applying integration by parts for problems like these. So when you do that, you're going to have, uh, when you multiply across, as you see here, as when you multiply diagonally, you get negative one-fourth times x squared times cosine of sine x, and then you have a negative one here, you multiply that to 2x, and you multiply that to negative one-sixteenth sine of 4x, so that's going to give you positive, and when you multiply the 2 by the 1 16th, that reduces to 1 8th, so that's how you get the 1 8th there, and of course you have x, and you have uh, sine of 4x, so that's what you have there, and then you keep going, here you have positive, multiply that to 2, multiply that to 1 over 64 cosine of 4x, so that's how you get uh, 2 over 64 is 1 over 32, so that's how you get that. And then you have cosine of 4x. And finally, for the last line, you have minus 0, so you're done. Minus 0 is just 0. So you just add your plus C, and that's how you do the tabular method. It's the same that you did by hand, uh, using integration by parts repeatedly, but here you're just organizing the work using a table, and it is most useful when you have to do repeated application, re repeated applications of integration by parts several times, maybe like three or four times. So the tabular method works really well for that. So today we looked at two objectives, and in the first one we looked at how to find an integral using integration by parts for a problem in which a factor of the original integral appears in the work, and we just looked at an application of the tabula method to perform integration by parts.